Hey everyone out there, Sean McElroy back with our AutoLine exclusives. Joining me today is Mia Bavakwa. She is the chief mechanic and technical writer for carparts.com. And Mia, I would really like to thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me, John. And I think uh, a great place to kind of kick off is, uh, what is carparts.com? What do you guys do there? Yeah, so carparts.com is an aftermarket parts and uh, technology company. And um, we have parts for everything from classic cars to electric vehicles. And, um, you know, right now we're, we've actually launched a, a whole new uh, hub page uh, for EVs. So um, we appreciate the vehicles of the past, but we're also looking uh, towards the uh, vehicles of the future, so. Yeah, and that's gotta be a big transition for you guys. I know, you know, EV sales have started to pick up a bit and they're projected to skyrocket over the next 10 years. So that's got to be a very integral part of your business going forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I mean, as everyone knows, you know, General Motors is uh, saying they're going to go to all electric by uh, 2035 and, you know, a bunch of the other automakers, uh, Jaguar and um, Nissan and select uh, markets. And so, um, yeah, the EV uh, onslaught is coming and, um, you know, carparts.com. Um, right now we already do have components that, you um, you know, the components that you would have on a traditional vehicle, such as, you know, wiper blades and uh, brake pads, things like that. We already have um, those components for uh, most EVs. You know, if you have a 2015, you know, Tesla Model S, you can you can come to uh, carparts.com and get uh, brake pads and wiper blades and a cabin filter, you know, those kinds of things. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I think that uh, not just carparts.com, but the aftermarket in general, you know, it's going to get uh, to be... Um, more and more parts dedicated towards uh, hybrids and EVs, not just the uh, parts that would be the same as a traditional vehicle, but, uh, you know, we're going to see more of the, uh, you know, hybrid and EV specific components start to trickle down to the aftermarket as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things with EVs that everybody always kind of points out is the, the less required maintenance on something, but you know, I'm always there to point out that they still have brakes, they still have suspension, yep. there's still potholes in the road. Yes. So there's still pl <laughs> plenty of parts and pieces that people are going to need. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, I mean, maintenance wise, um, they don't have as many fluids. And of course, you don't have the spark plugs to deal with and things like that with the pure EV. Um, but they do have uh, they do have upkeep, um, like you mentioned, you know, brakes and suspension components and things like that. Of course, the brakes don't usually wear out as fast because you have regenerative braking. But um, yeah, um, they're still uh, going to need upkeep, even though they, they might not have oil to change and uh, spark plugs to replace and those things of that nature. They still do require upkeep. And I'm really curious kind of about like the critical systems of EVs, motors, batteries, that sort of thing. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I know like Dorman, an aftermarket part supplier, I believe has had hybrid batteries available for some years now. Mm -hmm. Have you seen, uh, do you guys offer those sorts of parts or are you starting to see a bigger uptick in uh, sales of parts like that? Um, so um, we... I have just on board Dorman. I'm not sure if we're going to carry the uh, the uh, high voltage batteries yet. Um, I can uh, definitely uh, check and, and get back to you on that. Um, I was actually asking the uh, <laughs> the um, product team the other day. I'm like, yeah, we're going to get these uh, you know Dorman batteries and stuff. So um, and also um, I'm on the marketing team. So you know, as far as like what um, we're seeing uptick in sales with in um, EVs. I'm not sure of the numbers yet or like if we're seeing a great increase yet, but um, you know, I think that, like I said, the aftermarket in general is going to see a, a, an increase in the future. Um, so. Yeah. One of the reasons I ask about batteries is I'm particularly interested in that uh, in, in mainly the customer's view on something like that. Um, I know like battery swapping programs have been brought around over the years, but they never really took off. And one of the main reasons for that was that people didn't want a used battery. They didn't want something that they perceived as old or it had already had hours put onto it. So that, that was one of the reasons why I was curious about um, if you had considered Dorman or any of those other suppliers with the aftermarket batteries. Yeah, personally, like, um, 
you know, um, I was actually looking at these uh, reman batteries the other day, like, because I was looking at, uh, I don't know, I was I've been, like toying with the idea of getting, you know, I had a Gen 1 Prius um, that uh, it didn't run when I got it. And uh, actually, the battery was good, but I replaced the, uh, the motors and the inverter, and the motors and the trans and the inverter. And I drove that for a few years. And now I don't have, a, I don't actually have a hybrid EV. So I've been looking at getting another project one. I was thinking about the Leaf. And no one makes a reman battery pack for that yet, at least not to my knowledge. So, um, you know, I was thinking about uh, looking into that. That would be great if that becomes available. You can get like the individual modules, but not the whole battery. Um, then I was also kind of looking at Insight, and I was like, oh, maybe like a first-gen Insight, just because they can get a manual transmission and uh, <laughs> also a hybrid, and that's kind of a unique combination. But um, so I was looking at the um, options for reman uh, batteries for the Insight, and they are available, but I don't have actually any you know, first-hand experience with those battery packs yet, but I know they are available for certain vehicles. Like, they're not yet for the Leaf, but you, know, you can get them for the Insight, and you could get them for my first-gen Prius. Um, and I know... I was, Dorman offers them, and I think uh, Cardone offers some batteries as well. And um, if it was available, I think that probably would be <laughs> the option I would go for, like, a do is a DIYer. Um, because you're not going to buy a new battery for the, one of those old cars. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of plug and play. You don't have to replace the modules, things like that. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely a viable option um, for independent shops and, you know, DIYers that are, capable like by myself myself that can actually uh, do the work on hybrids and EVs. Well, you mentioned DIYers, but how about like dealer techs and independent techs? Do you feel like they're ready for this EV and hybrid revolution that's coming? Um, you know, at the dealership level, they do have, um, you know, some in-house training, of course. Um, but I think the automotive industry in general is not ready for the... Um, for these EVs, the current number of EVs. Um, and I think the reason for that is, uh, well, there's a few reasons for it. And, you know, I actually had an interview um, last week. Uh, and one thing that um, the person reminded me of is that um, the automotive industry in general kind of um, is kind of reluctant. Technicians are kind of reluctant sometimes to want to get into the new thing. You know, when fuel injection came out, they didn't, you know, versus carburetors, it was kind of a thing. They didn't want to be bothered with the fuel injection and the computer control. So there's always like that, uh, you know, I get comfortable working on carburetors. I get comfortable working on, you know, um, you know, drum brakes. It's like, um, why would I want to um, branch off into something new? Um, and then there's also the fact that, you know, that's kind of compounded by the fact that, uh, you know, technicians um, really, I feel are undervalued and uh, underpaid. Um, you know, I was just looking on doing a Google search, doing the average uh, pay for a technician is $40,000 compared to the uh, average national average, which is 50000 And technicians have to uh, supply their own tools, which costs tens of thousands of dollars. And, um, you know, it's hard work, too. And uh, then there's also uh, the stigma with that, that goes with it. Like, people um, don't give technicians enough credit. I mean, those things are going to actually, like, they, you know, they hinder the motivation. They, they don't... Um, People aren't going to be motivated to learn EVs if they're making, you know, can barely scrape by and, uh, you know, people don't give them the respect that they should. It's like, you know, they're not. Um, yeah, I feel, good like and, it, it's, uh, yeah, I feel like it's not only the pay, it's just like the general view of the industry in yeah, general. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it's still viewed as break your knuckles, get your hands dirty every day. You're you're going to go home with a sore back when in reality. It, it, there are parts of it that are that, but that's not the total scope of it. Um, you mentioned pay and stuff like that too. Because uh, I, I, I can't think of any other industry where you need the schooling to go for it, but right out of the bat, after paying for all that schooling, you've got another, you, you say tens of thousands of dollars. I would say it's easily 10 to 15 grand just to get the basic tools to work on cars. And then when we're talking about EVs and everything here, those basic tools will get you, you know, your oil changes, your suspension, your spark plug changes. So yes, there are some uh, similarities between ICE and EV cars, but then on top of that, and I'm sure you've seen the transition just as I have of where cars were very, very basic 
and now they're they're much more complicated. You have to know the computers. You have to have the right diagnostic tools to do it. And there's just this huge roadblock, I'll call it, of I think uh, attracting young people into the industry. And you know, I guess my question for you would be: Is there anything that we could do as an industry to maybe attract younger people and show them that hey, this isn't you know the work that your grandfather did way back when you you need to have this 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 technical knowledge this educational knowledge of how to work on these vehicles yeah um so that kind of goes back to you know like we were just saying like people um they, they view technicians as as uh, grease monkeys and that's totally not true especially when it comes to today's vehicles and um I don't know how we'd go about it, but yeah, somehow, um, you know, we need to convey the fact that uh, nowadays technicians are like half electrical engineer and we need to give them the credit where credit's due. Um, and I think um, coming even at the uh, trade school and the, uh, you know, technical college level, there needs to be more training on these high tech vehicles. And I know there are, you know, it is getting better in that respect. Um, but you know, there's still a lot of programs that aren't focusing on, you know, computer controls, electronics, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and they're still in doing stuff like uh, rebuilding wheel cylinders and stuff. And it's like you know, the training needs to be there, um, the respect needs to be there, and uh, the compensation needs to be there. And um, I think we have a long way to go. Yeah, I'll say. Uh, I was a tech for many years, and I'll say even when I was still working, I was going to, I don't know, as little as four classes, but as many as maybe 12 a year on very specific systems, like learning the uh, evaporative emissions of a Toyota Sienna minivan. That, you know, that was just one class where you you grind down into those, those little, little itty bitty details that you know, I think is sometimes missed on people. Uh, you know, we've done a number of shows where uh, there's been studies and programs that have shown uh, different programs, like uh, even 3D printing. 3D printing has been a great way to get younger people involved in different aspects of the auto industry. And I would love to see more stuff like that, just creative ways of showing people that hey, you've got to yeah. be able to hook up this tool and understand an, a, an electrical waveform and tell me whether this part is good or bad. I don't think a lot of people quite understand that that's part of uh, what mechanics and technicians do. And the sad thing is, you know, would you, when you mention like waveforms, I mean, you know, we're sending the training and stuff. For so many technicians... Um, you know, they haven't mastered the scope uh, using an oscilloscope, you know, when, especially when they come out of school and it's like, yeah, they can do. So, I mean, that right there, I mean, when it, as cars become more electrified, you know, that's going to be even more of a valuable tool. And um, the training doesn't focus on that. that yeah, most anybody can fix a car. It's the diagnosing of yeah. the issue. That's that's where the uh, the skill really comes in. Yes, exactly. I know, like, when I was a teenager, you know, sometimes I would be like, well, I can take out this and that, but I would be, you know, it was the figuring out that was the hard part when I was a teenager. So, the why. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, what's wrong to begin with? And, uh, so. Well, and, and, and to that point, you know, it's, it's not just technicians that need training or education. It's customers as well. You know, they, they we, we need to teach them about practices about uh, charging up, you know, going below 20% battery charge and over 80% battery charge is really not a good thing. You want to try and kind of keep it in that sweet spot. And I've got to imagine purchasing aftermarket EV and hybrid parts would probably require some education as well to the customer. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many people are at least are going to be buying hybrid and EV specific parts for themselves. I don't know how much of the uh, DIY community there is for that, you know, as a, it's kind of uh, in the high voltage side. But um, when it comes to buy, buying, um, you know, the traditional components that you would be able to get for any vehicle, um, I don't think there will be as much of a, a learning curve for that for a DIYer. Um, you know, if you can select brake pads for your 
Toyota, you can select them for your Tesla or something like that. Um, so yeah, I don't think uh, selecting parts will be as big of a, a, um, a learning curve as it might seem. What about uh, in terms of uh, being able to trust aftermarket parts? Is there any sort of trust issue that you see with customers sometimes or uh, any sort of education or different ways of marketing to them to, to show that a part is still going to be good, whether it's coming from the OEM or the aftermarket? Yeah, um, there are really good aftermarket parts. You know, me personally, um, when I work on my own vehicles, I can't remember when the last time I went to the dealership to buy a part. It's, um, you know, you can save a lot of money and, you know, for the most part, they, as long as you, <laughs> you, uh, you know, you make sure you do your due diligence to put in the correct year, make model, and the you know the the options that you need to uh, get the correct part. You know, it fits correct and it, it works right. Uh, you know, most of the time, you know, ninety nine percent of the time. So um, yeah, I think there are um, really quality aftermarket parts available nowadays, and uh, it's a good way for anyone to save money. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a great point. I mean. Uh... Places like carparts.com exist for a reason, and uh, they provide a good service, especially if you're looking at uh, cost of repairs and stuff like that. So it, it's always a great place to go to, and it's, it's nice to know that uh, you guys are expanding, looking into the future with the types of vehicles that are be, going to be coming down our roads here soon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, my vehicles are all really, really old, <laughs> you know, they're all like 20 years old. So and I have a bunch of vehicles. So, um, yeah, when I'm, uh, when I'm, um, when I'm fixing my 98 Astro van, I'm, I'm looking to the aftermarket. <laughs> I'm not going to the, well, the dealer doesn't even carry things for those old ones anymore for the most part, but, uh, yeah, uh, I think the, uh, aftermarket's a great resource. Well, I want to say Mia, Bev Aqua from carparts.com. Really thank you for joining me today and uh, giving us a little education about uh, the aftermarket in terms of where it's going. Yeah, thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate your time.